Many of the people I've known started playing 4X space games with Master of Orion. Sometimes the first one, sometimes the second one. I didn't. I didn't have access to Master of Orion when I first got a PC. But instead I had something else. I had Space Empires 4. To be more precise, I had the demo of Space Empires 4. Remember demos? Those sure were something, weren't they? And Space Empires 4 had one that was magical. It was the full game, well pretty much, the entire game, most of it. You could only play one thing, well I could only play one thing, and that was the quick game, which started you out as the Fong in the Gredok system, next to the Droshuka and the E, which in lore terms were eternal enemies, not that it mattered, and you could go nuts for 100 turns, 100. That is a long time period. Even modern demos like Civilization VI, which is a very similar game, limits its demo to just 60 turns. In 100, you could get a real good sense of the scale of the game, of the immensity of it, and be in awe of what could be accomplished by very, very few people. Space Empires IV was made by Malfador Machinations, which was a tiny, tiny company, made up mostly by, well, two people. One of them being the creator of the Space Empire series, Aaron Hall. And being such a small operation, they didn't put a lot of, let's say, effort into making a complicated visual presentation for the game. It was, if you were to go into the game's folders and files, which I did, because that's what you used to do back in the day, you'd find a bunch of PNG files, a bunch of text files, an executable and some settings files. Everything was there. Everything was so clearly visible. You could see every ship in the game there. Just a PNG, a small file, a, a tiny, tiny, tiny file. From that, you got one of the deepest and I would say, at a personal level, best 4x space games ever made. That's not to say it did not have flaws. And that's not to say that I'm an authority on the 4x space game genre. Since Space Empires 4, I have played Master of Orion, Master of Orion 2, Master of Orion 3 a bit. I've played... I haven't played the, the last one. I think there was, there was a new Master of Orion game released. Actually, frankly, in the past couple of years, I haven't played any of the newer space space 4x games with any degree of dedication. I've played Star Ruler for a bit, I was amazed at how you could generate a bajillion, a billion planets and stars to the point where my, my Athlon 64 would just freeze when I tried to generate a giant galaxy. I played some Endless Space, I played some Story to the Stars 2, some Galactic Civilization 3, but I... I didn't really get into these games as much as I did with Master of Orion 1 and 2 and Space Empires 4. Or even as much as I did with the demo of Space Empires 4. Honestly, I've played the demo of Space Empires 4 possibly almost as much as I played Master of Orion 2. So in terms of how the genre has evolved over the years, I'm not really well suited to frame this game. I could easily tell you how it compares to Space Empires 5, which I did play. And it's basically Space Empires 4, but without all the limitations that were actually put in place there for a good reason. And I'll get to that when it comes to research. But first, what's this game about? Well, being a 4x space game, you start out in a system. Well, actually, you start out in a configuration menu with uh, your choices of uh, what the galaxy has to look like, what uh, the planets are, what the resources are, you know, stuff like that. Then you create your civilization, which can be... Well, anything you wanted to. You want to be a gas world scientist race? Sure, go do that. You want to be some xenophobe from a rock planet that keeps blowing each other up? Yeah, you can do that too. You have a lot of freedom. You can be people that eat rocks like you could in Master of Orion 2 though. You can be mechanical, however, which just makes you immune to plagues. And after you set up the game, you pretty much do what you always do in these kinds of games. You start up in your system, which has a planet that is colonized by you and then you can spread out through your solar system, seeing what planets you can colonize, which ones you can maybe explore a bit or take notice of for when you have the technology to colonize them. Then you have your war points which let you traverse the endless vastness of space to other systems and you start collecting resources and you start doing research and you start doing spying and you start meeting other civilizations, other empires and you start scheming and waging wars and you eventually realize that you've spent 
The last five hours designing a single ship. I wouldn't say that Space Empires 4 did anything wildly different than Master of Ryan 2 did, but it, it just put everything on an entirely different level. It had a sense of scale to it. And I mean a scale of... You start out with nothing. You start out with basic faster than light. Well, not even faster than light travel. You don't ever travel faster than light within the terms of the ship movement. I think you're always slower that's why you have the warp points to take you to other systems because you don't have FTL drives but from that nothing you start with from those depleted uranium shells that you fire at your enemies and your wimpy rockets actually your missiles you end up developing weapons that attempt to teleport the enemy ship to the origin of time where it will be destroyed without its shields or armor ever mattering. You can create mind control devices that will just capture enemy ships. You can engineer plagues. You can't make mutant uh, Xenos like in Stellaris to act as your army though or Terminators. Uh, you just have uh, normal troops with tanks and stuff. However, you, you can do a lot of stellar architecture. You can create planets from asteroids. You can create ring worlds which take a lot of effort and time so I don't have any to show you in this video. You can create black holes. You can detonate stars which I did in this video where I did it to my own solar system so you could see the effect. You have the tools to go nuts. But it's not a game about going nuts at that scale. No, no, it's about going nuts at every scale. This game is for people who love to micromanage. You, you do have a, a governor system that lets you assign governors controlled by the AI to do things for you, but you can quite easily. And by easily, I mean if you're really dedicated, manage every colony you have in the universe. The, the, the corner of the galaxy you play in, it's not the entire universe. You don't have any sort of limits like you do in Stellaris with uh, being able to only control a certain number of planets before you know you reach a point of diminishing returns until you progress a bit more, something like that. No, no, no. You can spam colonies and the AI will do so as well. So you, you can make giant fleets of very different and very specialized ships, each with their own utilities, each with their own attributes, each having a different role like fleet carriers and fighter bombers and weapons platforms and interceptors and drone launchers and giant base stations that move really slowly but can pretty much wipe out the known galaxy with the firepower you can put on them. You can have weapons that are different in size, even though they're the same weapon, but they're just bigger or tinier, depending on how you want to use them, what you want to use them on. The degree of freedom that the game gives you is amazing. It is astonishing. It is beautiful. And it is also maddening. On the default level of play, your research will progress well, I want to say quickly, but it progresses at a pace that makes you think, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna build my ship now with that uh, Mesen Blaster, I'm just gonna wait a bit more and get the Phase Polar Beam, which cuts through enemy shields, it ignores it completely, so uh, I'm just gonna research physics one more time and then I'm gonna build a ship, and hey, oh, hey, oh, whoa, 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 what's that, oh, Tachyons, yeah, I, I wanna have that on my ship too, so I'm gonna wait a bit more and then uh, build a ship with tachyons as well and you keep doing that until you realize oh yeah my enemy has uh, destroyers and battleships at my door and I have nothing because I waited to uh, unlock all the things to build my ships now this this may be just my way of playing I, I keep waiting for more advanced things to show up and then build the biggest baddest meanest ship I can and immediately realize I don't have the uh, resources to actually maintain them because they require maintenance otherwise they will fall apart and die. Though thankfully uh, there is a limit to this. You can research the same technology multiple times in terms of weapons or armor or shields and you'll get slightly better versions of those items. You know, something that gives you plus 10 damage, plus 100 shields, some moral shield region or something like that and they can have maybe 9 to 10 versions at most. The end one being really powerful but not too powerful compared to the first version you had which is in contrast to Space Empires 4 where I believe you could uh, research to the 50th 
level of a thing at which point the numbers got crazy and it, it, you were even more stuck in that mindset of i'm just gonna wait one more level before making the actual ship now naturally costs of uh, creating a ship with that kind of firepower and equipment do increase which will ultimately lead to your downfall as well but still it was an amazing victory to well, discover and traverse and explore more so that it did something few other games of this type ever do. It takes into account the fact that, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this galaxy-spanning empire with research facilities across many globes has the ability to focus on more than one thing at a time. So even though you had your research points pulled into single, you know, pool, you could equally divide them among all your projects. So you could research multiple things at the same time. You could even do that with intelligence projects. You know, the spy stuff. I'll get to that soon. It was a very, very neat way of letting you not just wait for the next tick to be discovered, but it let you actively place a less important, less costly tech thing after it and have them both be discovered at the same time. You couldn't do that with production though. Uh, sadly, you could not, which was kind of a shame. You could either build units or facilities, so you couldn't do as much with a planet, but on the other hand, you could build space stations with space yards on them, so you could have a big giant space dock with multiple shipyards, all of them pumping out ships while the planet was just building facilities. You had the tools to pretty much create whatever kind of experience you wanted to. Especially if you love spying. And th this is the thing that, that I keep asking the developers of Stellaris to add. Espionage. This this took what, what you had available in Master of Orion or Civilization and just pumped it up so much that it was its own game almost. You could, you could disrupt the weather on another planet. You could create insurrections on ships and basically get them to rebel and work for you. You could install puppet political parties. You could intercept communications between two empires. You could pretend to be another empire and give information or declarations to another empire. You had a myriad of options, which were amazing, but were, were that tiny little itsy bitsy undercut by the fact that the diplomacy in the game was kind of horrible. Now, this this I've seen is kind of a um, staple of uh, this genre. Master of Ryan had the same problem, Master of Magic had it, Civilization had it. You know, with uh, the ever peaceful and fun loving Gandhi nuking you. Didn't matter what you did in Space Empires 4, didn't matter how much you tried, eventually, repeatedly, people would ask you for alliances, cancel them the next turn, and then declare war on you because you, in the system you evolved in, the system that you grew up in, in the system that you've lived in always before spaceships, before space travel, you are actually infringing on their sacred grounds where they came from, call home, or have owned since the beginning of probably time, even though they're from the other side of the galaxy. and never set foot there until recently. I'd make a Hungarian joke, but uh, the only one I've got is long time no see. What I'm getting at is that the AI in the game was completely nuts when it came to diplomacy. It was just not really functional. You could not count on them acting properly. It was very annoying, especially when you had descriptions and lore and uh, biography for the uh, the other empires, like the Droshuka and the E, which were eternal enemies since the dawn of time, but they both would ally against you quite often because your face sucked. Now granted, the Fong weren't very pretty, but they had their charm. Also, I think they had the coolest looking ships. That's pretty much the, the biggest single failing of the game, I would say. Well, that and uh, the fact that there being no uh, limit on how many colonies you can build, the AI would build them everywhere, non-stop. <laughs> You would have a lot of work to do when it came to actually wiping them out. Now, sure, you did have multiple ways of achieving victory, but it would mostly degenerate to war because the AI would push you into that direction. You did have a sort of research victory, but it was, wasn't about researching and entering the next phase of evolution, the unlocking of the inner secret of 
becoming one with the universe, you just had to research a certain percentage of the tech tree and that's it. I was also kind of bummed out that the temporal research line wouldn't let you actually go back to the beginning of the game with, you know, all of you have accomplished at least in one planet where a, a giant fleet and wipe out everybody then. <laughs> when they were still at turn one. That would have been something, that would have been amazing. I wonder if there's a mod for that. You didn't have something that could be called an economic victory. You did have a score, uh, every civilization had a score, but I think you could cheese that by just having a bunch and a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of colonies that weren't really worth all that much. Yeah, it just descended into a slugfest and thankfully when it came to slugfests, you could kamikaze black hole their sun. You could just make ships built for one single person purpose, speed, and turning their sun into a black hole or just imploding it and destroying everything, committing genocide at a level that dwarfs the imagination. You could be ruthless, you could be the terror beyond the stars that even gods fear. And this was just simple PNG files with not really all that much animation involved. It was really missing a cinema, well actually it did have sort of had cinematics when you would blow up a star but it didn't have the same impact as the uh, stellar converter from Master of Orion when, when blowing up a planet would, would just have a a sequence like the Dead Star just cracking open a planet and that was just beautiful. In terms of presentation, I would say <laughs> in some ways it was a bit beneath Master of Ryan 2, but in every other way apart from maybe the AI, it was I think a superior game. It wouldn't have hurt if it had uh, multiple settings for the speed of the animations instead of just on and off and sometimes in combat fast and probably it could have done with a few more tool tips but it's it's still quite amazingly playable and here's the amazing thing like the really really amazing thing this game requires you to play it at at least 800 by 600 and my first monitor didn't support that i played this in 640 by 480 and it worked even though i was never able to see back then most of the screen i had no clue there was an actual mini map of the galaxy i couldn't see that stuff the the entire right part of the screen was just not there for me. So I couldn't see the minimap, I couldn't see details about planets, I couldn't even see options like abandoned colony or set up an AI governor, I think. No wait, actually abandoned planet was there, I distinctly remember clicking on it and then wondering where did everybody go? Because the, the interface scaled differently at 800 by 600 than it does on the, I think it's 1024 by 780 that it is now. The point is, even without the entire interface, it was still quite playable, quite enjoyable. Even with a 100 journal limit, it was, it was beautiful. And it still is. More so that I learned that there's mods for it. There are quite a lot of mods for it. People seem to really enjoy this game and they've tried to fix pretty much everything they could. Not sure if they succeeded, I didn't really get the chance to properly test out all the mods or anything like that, but they're there, they still exist, they're still support, well not supported, but they're still available for download and play. And it still just amazes me how few people worked on this game and how feature complete it was on release. Now I like Stellaris, I think it's a good game, but it was nowhere near as plentiful as Space Empires 4. Now sure, it did have other mechanics that this game didn't have, it had other components that made it a lot more intriguing and deeper in certain areas, but it still lacks it espionage, it still lacks intelligence, it doesn't make you feel like you're capable of reaching those far reaches of technology. At least in the base version it, it had a bunch of DLCs I never got to play and I think that at one point they changed the way that FTL works so that now everything is like in space empires with uh, with basically warp points or at least the uh, the highway system which is eh, okay it's sort of taking out content which i don't really think is a good idea because in space empires 4 if you wanted people to not visit your star system you could just implode your own warp points and then create others to whatever system was in range and then you could make a warp point up to 500 light years away sure you had to research the technology but hey if you you wanted to be safe that was a good tactic just become a turtle a space turtle with four elephants on your back and a disc and on it a wizard with a hat that said wizard i wonder if there's a uh, discord mod for it probably isn't there probably should be i think there were space monsters involved at some point in the development of the game but 
They never actually got released. That's why there's a mod adding them in the game. And that's, I think, one of the main things that was missing from the original version of Space Empires 4. Whereas in Master of Orion 2, you had your Space Dragon, you had your Giant Amoeba, and you even have them in Stellaris. They were missing here. But still, it gave you so much more. It gave you so, so much more. And I'd like to highlight again the fact that I haven't really played many other games in this channel over the past couple of years. I, I, I think there was a Star Ruler 2 in development at one point. I, I've barely, barely touched Endless Space 2 since I did the show about it like 2-3 years ago. Then again, I, I think there was a new Master of Orion released and didn't play it. I'm not sure where the channel is right now. I'm not sure if Space Empires 4 is still what can be called representative of the pinnacle of the, of the genre. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's been surpassed by many other games released in the past decade or so. If it has been, please tell me. But first I think you should probably play it to know exactly the scale to which it could go. It's about $10, 9 euros in GOG and Steam right now if you're curious. I really encourage you to go play it. Or at least get the demo. It probably still works. And it was a lot of fun so many years ago.